on. Who was not a Nelson fan back in the 80s? Come on. Maybe they were in the 90s. They were here at the Shrubbery Festival this year. Y'all need to go see the Nelsons, their dad, Ricky Nelson, and then there's the two brothers, because they were twins. They both had long blonde hair. I thought I could grow my hair like them. No. Oh my gosh. I did have beat for that. I saw Sammy wasn't enjoying it, so we had to cut it. He was, it was, like, it was like after the rain. Um, Steve Easter said my song, Walk Up Chung, should have been Rock You Like a Hurricane. Rock You Like a Hurricane. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I'd have known that one. Yes, you would have known that one. Today's sermon, and it's not going to be a long one, um, after the rain, a lot of times when you're going through something, um, you kind of, you're hopeful, you're prayerful, especially as, let's use church terms. Oh, in the middle of the storm, you know, I, I turn my eyes to God. We all know the scripture, and I'm not going to preach on the one where they're in the boat, and he's asleep, and they wake. We're not doing that one. Um, after the rain is when all of a sudden we go quickly back to our normal. When the power came on this morning at 346, not much wakes Kimberly when she's a dead sleep. She can sleep like and snore. And she says, I haven't had a CPAP in four days, too. I'm chosen for some CPAP, too. I have not hit my CPAP. I, I almost put it on the other morning, and it didn't even have power. But that's a different story. I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, she sits straight up in the bed. Power's on. The, front, the, the lights went on. 346. I'll look over. It's 346. We immediately go back into normal mode. Yeah. We cleaned everything up real quickly. Power cords up. We had to... We had the garage door, we had to get it fixed, the power's on, everything's good. We're like, yes, yes. Kimberly's like, why are we doing this so fast? I said, I don't know, but we're doing it. <laughs> because after the rain, we want to get back to some normal life, and all of a sudden, we're like, yes. 20 minutes, 30, I think about 25 minutes to get everything back. We're like, we're moving, all three of us. Power went back out. Oh, no. <laughs> and, I'm sitting there. and at that point, I was fed up. We're not going to do don't worry about it. We're not going to do anything. What about the generator? Who cares? What about the refrigerator? We've lasted four days, three hours. Isn't going to kill anybody or however long. Forget it. We're going back to bed. And I sat in a chair. I didn't even go back to bed. Just sat there. I was going to fall asleep there. Well, luckily, the power did come back on this morning around 620. Came back on. But one of the things I always get reminded about, and you hear people talking about it, is what do you do after the rain? God got me through it, so now I can go back to doing what I always did. Every one of you knows a person, I'm looking at Michael Wayne because I call it often do. Every one of you knows a family member that you prayed them through a rough time, and they, they, oh, they're all about it. I need prayer, I need, I need this, and I need this, and they get, they get straightened, straightened, everything's perfect for about a minute. God gets them through it, over it, boom, they're right back to who they were or before it. Listen, after the rain, here's what we need to understand. God is still good. But I, I, the storm's over. God is good all the time. Why do we forget that? Isaiah 43 and 2, the prophet of the Old Testament says this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. In the midst of whatever storm you're going through, whatever you struggle, we're supposed to turn to and remember that God is with us. That God has got us. God is guiding us. And a lot of times we get all scared, get all nervous, and we forget that. We have a mental blockage and we say, how are we going to get through it? You see the hurdles in front of you. How are we going to get over that? Three men go into a, a furnace. How are we going to survive? Fourth appears, right? In Jesus Christ. All of these things we understand. And the prophet was telling you, when it's prophetic, it means this. You will go through some waters, some storms, some fires. There will be things that come against you. You're going to go. If you came to church today and you thought I was going to tell you something. Hey, 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 everything happens well for us and we're all good to go for the next couple of years and Put your uh, generators away. And how many are talking about getting a new generator right now? I'm like, we got to find one. They went on sale immediately, right? All of these things we start to think about don't get so comfortable now. If you were so nervous and worried, where was God in the middle of the storm? I was praying last night. I said, God, you got to give us some power. I'm praying for electricity. I said, whatever lesson you're trying to get, and I will tell you what the lesson I learned. There should be a lesson for this. We united as a family like we haven't done in a long time. We didn't have to go on vacation to be together. 
The three of us hunkered down, and Mom would go over and see her, take her out to Martha's and have all-you-can-eat uh, shrimp. And we, we, we did family things because we needed each other. We said, and Myron uh, reiterated the same thing, we opened up our front door, our back door, all of our windows so the air could circulate. We knew what our neighbors were doing. They knew what we were doing. We were waving at them. All the men mowed their yards at the same time. It was beautiful. We got rid of all the distraction and got back to what God has given us in our family. No matter how bad things are, I looked around and I'm saying, God has been so good and blessed us with so many things. Isaiah's telling you, it's going to happen. Sadly enough, it will probably happen again. We live in Florida. <laughs> we do. There's water. Oh, Peninsula for a reason. There's water all around us. People live in California. They live in California. And they know something bad's going to happen to them. We know and should, as Christians know, there are going to be fires and struggles. But here's the Isaiah prophet scripture that I want us to hold on to today. Before he says that, he says this earlier in chapter 41. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We're going to break that down and explain to you some theological terms. I don't always teach my theological stuff. But here's a theology lesson that you need to understand. The attributes of God. Charles Ryrie calls them the perfections of God. I like his version. Uh, historically, we call them the attributes of God. Charles Ryrie in his theology books calls them the perfections of God. And there are some things about God we need to understand are God. Doesn't change. People like to throw in there, well, God could change because we know in Scripture in the Old Testament where they prayed and he changed his mind. God can change his mind. He can't change his character. If he changes his character, he's not God. For you, you think, well, that's just a God thing. It's the same with you. Everyone in this room. You have certain things about you or the way you are. That's your character. I get a look at some of the people that I work with every day, and I know their character. I know how they respond to things and how they're going to smile their way through. Smiles for Miles is going to smile her way through. Coach Teton, the most loved guy at the school because he's always running around. He's always on his phone taking it. He's loved by the kids and he just is, he exudes that. When he doesn't do those things, when Miss Miles isn't smiling or when your mom's not being your mom or Miss Shiver's not being Miss Shiver, that's when you look at him and say, well, that's out of their character. It's not who they really are. So we have characteristics of God that are never, ever, ever going to change. And the interesting thing is it's not made up by some man who wrote some theology book. It's right here in Scripture, and I'm going to break it down for you. It says, the first thing, do not fear, for I am with you. God is omnipresent. Yeah. There are three omnis that we're going to learn today. Some people put in a fourth one. I can show you where it is. But these are the three that we're going to focus on today. God is omnipresent. What does that mean to us? Always. Always. Was he there before the storm? Yes. Was he there in the middle of the storm? Yes. yes. Is he there after the storm? Yes. Is he in Fort Myers in South Florida? Yes. Is he in the darkest corners of humanity? Yes. Is he in a lost person's life? Yes. They just don't acknowledge it. There's a difference. Have you ever been in a relationship with somebody or know somebody that they didn't acknowledge you? Like you're standing in a group. They do it in, in high school all the time. There'll be that one kid and he's standing in the group and no one acknowledges him. And that person starts to feel kind of left out. They don't know why. They're still in the group. They just don't acknowledge those others that are around them. God is omnipresent in our lives. If you think you get away with things, you don't. I remember growing up Southern Baptist and, and traditional church and big church, and all of a sudden they would teach this, this word that I thought was absolutely a Bible. I looked for it when I was in seminary, and backsliding is not in there. Although I heard it quite often. Jimmy's just a backslider. He's back. What they love to do is see people that have backslidden, and then they come home, right? I thought of it as a sport thing. Where are they sliding? They're backsliding. It means they're not making it around the home plate. They're going the wrong direction. Listen. When you, and I, this is something that was sobering to me. I mean, literally sobering to me. 
The word backsliding means that you've gone away from God. As a believer who has received him, he is forever with you. The shame came into my life when I realized how many places I took Jesus Christ to that he should never have gone to. And I didn't take him there to be the light. I didn't, take, I didn't even acknowledge his presence. I took him there because he was there to support me, to guide me, consciously telling me, get out of this situation. And I said, come along for the ride. God is omnipresent in our lives. So that means this day, tomorrow, the next day, as a believer in Jesus Christ, he's with you to guide you. As a non-believer in Jesus Christ, he is still everywhere. Here's the great thing you can take away from this. The omni of God is not of Satan. Meaning this. God is not, or Satan is not ever present. That's right. He's not. For all of you on the same day that did something really bad, and the person that gave y'all the one one sign there, and they flipped you off, or you say a curse word, and every one of us in this church, if tomorrow we have a bad day, and we curse that first person, or we curse that person that takes the last diet do off the, the counter, or whatever you do, remember, every one of us is going to say, well, the devil made me do it. No, he ain't doing that. You get it on your own. You've been ignorant enough to say, I've learned how to do the wrong thing. It is so much more difficult to learn to do the right thing. But it's so much easier because the consequences are usually less painful. Doing the wrong thing usually is kind of exciting for the minute. It might be easy to do, but the consequences last and last and last. Some of you are in here who are so young, you're saying, no, it can't last. Let me tell you, for us that are older, it lasts a long time. There are things in my past that was not Pastor Randy that still haunt me today. They don't lord over me or guide me or mold who I am, but I still know that those things in my past hold back parts of me that should be all of God's. Omnipresent. I do not fear, for I am with you. Take great comfort in knowing that God is with us. He says in the next portion of the same verse, Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. God is omniscient. Dismayed means like, oh, I don't know, I'm kind of, oh, I'm not so certain. Don't be worrisome or not understand what you're supposed to be doing because God is omniscient. He knows you very well. I say this all the time in Relationship 101. If you want to have a relationship with someone, you've got to know them. I can tell you some other, since Pastor Kimberly decided to be so open today, I'm going to open up some more things. She likes reality shows. Like, thinks that that's the best thing ever. Like, I just met you, but all of a sudden, you meet the person that you're going to marry when they walk down the aisle together. What's that called? Bachelor and Bachelorette. No, no, the one where they oh, just get married. The, the, um, Scoop Sight. That's why I'm saying Scoop Sight. <laughs> Rock up. Love at first sight. Love at first sight. I love that. Stupid. Do not do, not do this, made for I am your God. He knows you. And if you want to have a relationship with God, I'm not going to tell you to go to church. Look, that's not good. That's not good marketing right there. I'm not going to tell you that you have to be in constant prayer unless you're talking to him. Well, what is that prayer? No, because when you're having a conversation with God, it's supposed to be two ways. If you're just telling him a bunch of your wants, your needs, or writing your Christmas list, that is not what he wants from you. God knows you, and he wants to have a relationship with you, so you've got to know him. People say, why do you read your Bible? Because I want to know more about the God that I'm in love with. Right. He knows everything about me. What about that one thing? He knows it. I can remember sitting in, and this is being a little honest about myself, and a little open. I can remember trying to get my top secret clearance in the military. TSSCI, which means a little bit higher than just secret. It's way up there. and I had to go through this interview, and the guy's real nice. You think he's going to be some guy like a super spy or something? He just got an office building in Orlando. We talked. I thought he was my bud. There were things in my past. I'm not going to tell that guy. And I can remember a two and a half hour conversation with him, and I covered everything in my life that I wanted him to know. I was like, ha ha! And as I got up and I went, and as soon as I grabbed the doorknob, he said, hey, chief, because I was a warrant officer, let me ask you about this one incident. I'm like, how does he know about the incident? And he's like, I said, you know about that? He goes, we're the government. We know everything. God knows everything about 
you. And he still loves you. In that stupid show, of this, I might even call that, Michael Wayne did, in that show, the crazy thing is they get married, and then they start to know about each other and learn about each other, and they're like, oh my glory, what did I just do? Why would I, ever, this person, they seem so nice and superficial at the first, but when you really, really get to know somebody, that's when you start going, I don't trust that person. I don't believe that person. I don't think they're being real about that. I think they're fake. I think they're lying. We start to do all these things when we get to know them. Let me tell you this. When you get to know God through his word, through communication and being around his people, that's why I didn't say you have to go to church. Because if you get to know God, you want to be in church. I've always said this about how many of you have been in our church in the last couple of years and realized Pastor Randy doesn't, we don't pass a plate here. We don't ask for your tithe at all. And you're saying, well, how's that work? The giving never changed when we stopped asking. It didn't change. Pastor Kevin Wynn taught us that, taught me that and said, try it. The, the giving never changed when we stopped asking. And here's why. I've always taught you, if you have a relationship with God, and this is what God wants for us to have is this church, then the provision will be through his people. If you're in a right relationship with God, I don't worry about the giving. God knows you, and he wants the best for you, so don't be dismayed about not knowing. When's the power going to come on? When's the power going to come on? When's the power going to come on? There were times, and this is a true statement, I walked in the house, and it was like, day, we only been in it like 12 hours. And I walk in the house, and I'm like, George! The security panel, it's lit up. I think we have power. That's on a battery backup, Dad. It's, uh, it's going to fail. Golly. I was at my mom's house yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yesterday. yesterday. Cleaned her yard, did everything, got her taken care of real well, showing her how to do the emergency release on her garage door. Here's my mom. I love her to death, but all of a sudden I showed her how, and I got a hook, and when I brought the garage door, she goes, you made the light come on. <laughs> she looked at me and I'm like I don't think I have that much power but... <laughs> and then all of a sudden she looks, it, that wasn't her first glow then she looks over the little sparky um, charger box or the little, little sparky box that says if we're getting any electricity and there were two green lights, she goes, there's green lights there I go, you got power mom <laughs> first of all she thought I could turn on bright lights with my power, I'm like man listen, God knows you and what you're going through don't be so dismayed about the answer. Ask him and trust in him. Don't be dismayed. He's omniscient. Last one. I will strengthen you and I will help you. God is omnipotent. We have been taught by Nike. Oh, it's a, Nike's on. Billy and I have the same shoes. You might wear them today. You know what? Um, just do it. One of the dumbest slogans I ever thought was when the U.S. Army came out, we're army of one. It's like, we got 800,000 people attacking us and I'm just an army of one. I'm telling you, that doesn't sound very comforting. What it means is this, the world has taught you to rely upon yourself. <coughs> this is a lesson that Pastor Randy works on all the time. If you need help, let me know. I'll be there. Billy says it to me all the time. Anytime I'm doing yard work, Dad always says, I'll be there. If you need help with that, I'll show up. Just make a call. And all of a sudden, here's what I, I'll just go and do it. I will strengthen you and help you. God is omnipotent. Why would I not trust and turn to the all-powerful? We turn to everything else. Let me turn to a book of wisdom. Let me turn to a friend that's been through hard times with me. Let me turn to a TV show that will teach me and they'll talk to me. Let me turn, we turn to everything except the most powerful thing, person, creator there is. And that's God. Why don't we turn to him first? Amen. It would save us a lot of headaches. It would sure save us a lot of time. I will strengthen you and I will help you. The fourth, I told you there might be four. Some people call to help you. Um, um, Omnibenevolence, which he's always helping us. But most theologians just go with the three. God is omnipotent. 
If I knew where the power was the minute my storm knocked it out, I would go to that source and turn that power off. If you're sitting there and I thought the fear was, we have our generator outside, Kimberly kept asking me, because George did exactly what you're supposed to do, turn off the main breaker, make sure there's none so no power goes back into the grid, so if, if it's energized, you're not getting anybody on the line, electrocuted. We did all those things. How are we going to know when the lights come back on? All right, let's leave one little thing on. you got to know when the lights go on. If we know where the strength and the power is, we should go to it immediately. We have grown into a culture that seeks it. As a Christian, let me say something that doesn't sound very pastoral either. I'm saying a lot of things that don't go to church to get your answers. Go to God. Take me out of it. But why do we go to church then? Because I'm going to preach the word of God and I believe what he has for you. He tells me and I share it with you. Sometimes it's for me and you most often. So, why wait until Sunday? If you're a believer that the only time you enter into prayer, praise, worship, and hearing the Word of God is on Sunday, you miss six days. The majority, I can do that with simple math, you miss the majority of the week. Brother Eddie, who's not with us any longer, he's in heaven with Jesus, always said, Tuesday gets him to Wednesday, Wednesday gets him to Sunday. Every day we need to be focused on his power, his wisdom, and the fact that he's with us. We throw those omnis in there and we understand them. We know what they mean, but we don't realize we trust in those things. Those are the things that have your back. He ends this whole passage in Isaiah 41.10 by saying this, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You're God's right-hand man. He's got the whole world in his hands. We've seen this kid. I've seen the illustration, and I, I try to teach it because people always talk about once you're in the hand of God and you're a child of God that you can't lose your salvation. I believe that if you're eternal, it's eternal salvation that believe if you trust and believe and receive him fully. And if you're in the hand of God, uh, it's kind of an open hand, and all of a sudden things might come your way, but you're not going to get knocked out of them because... He holds you in the righteous right hand. That's the right, not just the direction, but that's the right hand to be in. Who sits at the right hand of the Father? Jesus. Who is the Lord of your life? Jesus. Who dwells in your heart and changes you for a for life? Jesus. I will. Not you. Not the world. Not the self-help books. Not reality TV. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What I need you to know today is that after the rain, as much as before and during, God has you. What brings comfort and peace? God has you. The Germans has just recently went through a loss, right? Take great comfort in knowing God has mom. I take great comfort in knowing that my entire family, because I've spoken to them individually, that and they pass and transition from this life to the eternity with Jesus, I know where they're going to be. God has them. Amen. That's a good hands, I'm telling you. If today you're sitting there and you're not sure where your loved ones are going to be for all eternity, not just where they're going to move, not where their next rental is going to be, not what property or where they're going to retire, but if you do not know where they're going to spend all of eternity, you need to ask them some questions. And if you don't have the right words to say, call me. I will ask them for you. God has you. That is how, after the rain, we still feel energized. That is how, after the storms move on, and yet there's going to be another one, there's going to be another challenge, this week is going to be a challenge for many of us going back to school. It's going to be a challenge. You're going to walk in, they're going to, it's going to be a challenge. If you think things are back to normal, they're not. They're not. No large cups at the racetrack. We're not back to normal. If you don't go. <laughs> We're not. If they don't have large, no. And you know they'll never have lids for them again because they don't know where those are. We're not back to normal. 
But we're still in God's hands. I was so excited when I came in and found the power was on in the church. And people were texting me, are we going to have church? Yeah, we're going to have church. Even if I didn't have a shower and I was still stanky, we still going to have church. And I was going to pray, God let my praise and worship be a pleasing aroma to you because my body doesn't. You know what I'm saying? God has you. If you're a child of God, He has your best interest and your plan for you. If you don't know Him, He's still there, ready to receive you. You have to acknowledge the greatest gift ever given. That's Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for getting us through the storm. The physical weather, the actual weather that, that came across our state and all the other states that were impacted. But most importantly this day, God, thank you for getting us through the daily storms. The challenges of our earthly relationships Sometimes in our own household, with our co-workers, with friends. God, we need you. And today I acknowledge your presence, your power, and your wisdom. Thank you for all of those things in my life. And thank you so much for being ready to share that with every one of your children. Lord, I ask a blessing a blessing over your people. Not just the ones sitting here and hearing this sermon today, but all of your people. But I also ask humbly, Lord. Isaiah was a prophet to God's people. But there are a lot of people this day that their storm rages on. They don't have the peace and strength that comfort by knowing and trusting in you. For many of them, it feels like they're giving up or giving in to their own thoughts and their own wisdom, Lord God. But there's no one greater, no one more understanding, more loving than you. For, for those reasons, Lord, I pray, I pray, I pray. They will put down their pride. They will put away the ignorance. And they will accept you as Lord and Savior. Lord, it's not about walking down an aisle. It's not about um, being in that special service at that special moment. It's about in their lives, Lord, confessing that they need you. That they are a sinner and the only way that they're going to ever be reconciled to you is through receiving and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I pray, 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 as Dad said so eloquently, there is great opportunity in this day. If all we're doing is focusing on ourselves, Lord God, I, I, I ask you, when we pour our strength into others, may we be about prayer, about your business. As Laura said, your kingdom shall come, and we pray, and we undergo that we understand your plans. But this day, I just pray for salvation across this world. Lives be changed because of the gift of your son. May people just look at the world and say, I don't want a part of that. I don't want to be about God's business. I receive you today. I pray those prayers are being prayed all over this planet. God, thank you for being all that you are.